Welcome to the episode, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's Daryl Nyams here with Bruce. We have a big one today. You know, the rap queen is in the building. Yeah. <laughs> how you feeling, ma? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're great, thank you. Good. Thanks how, for having me. Thank, thank you for coming through. Um, how are you feeling about hip hop right now? Um, I'm excited. I'm always excited about hip hop. So many people are dropping at the moment, and I think they're trying to like re identify what the hip hop sound is. Um, but it's dope. It's exciting. Yeah, you are somebody that I've always felt like because you're gorgeous, Thank people you. tend <laughs> to overlook like your rap skills. You know, where we really, when if you really pay attention to your skills, like you really take your pen so serious. Yeah. At which point did you realize that you were going to take rap seriously? Um, I think once I graduated in 2013, and I worked for about two years. And then I quit. I just quit and I was like, this is what I'm going to do full time. And I haven't like looked back since. But you're right, there is that complex that I feel like people think, oh, she's pretty. There's no way that she's really doing what she's doing or working as hard as she's working. There's always somebody that they're saying is the reason why I'm successful and whatever. But I really work hard and I grind and I use my degree in my work every day. And um, at the end of the day, like it is me. I'm working, I'm doing the things, I'm releasing the music, I'm working on the music, I'm working on the brand. But I think it's just like, oh no, she she's probably using her body for something. That's why she got a hit. She slept with this person because that's why she got a hit. And yeah. that's not true. Um, at which point would you would you say this is my breakthrough moment? Is it Aman Tombazani? Yeah, definitely. But not only because of um, working on such a big song. The original was already so big. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. remix was so big, and it was also because of the artists that were on that um, project as well were huge, much bigger than yeah. I was, you know. And um, having an opportunity to be able to perform at the Channel O Awards in 2010 was also really big. Oh know? yeah, because it was it was monumental as an African stage. Yeah, and then and then um, okay, Aman Tombazani dropped. How does that change your life? Um, I think it changed my life because I got more eyes on me. Yeah. Because I mean, being on that song with so many dominant male rappers, it put their fan bases onto me because yeah. the song was already so big. Yeah. I was on a, a song with Ricky, Okay, my Loom Cool Cat, Kid um, X, Ginger. Yeah. Uh, you Christa, know. Christa, yeah. yeah. So it's just like there were so many big prominent names that were male. Yeah. And yeah. it's like they were talking about a song about girls. You had to have a female representation yeah. on there. So as soon as the artwork came out, I really felt like my life had changed. Just as soon as they saw that little circle with all the artists on it and I was there, it was a really different conversation. Yeah, so even from a booking perspective, it changes everything. Booking perspective, talkability perspective, interest yeah. perspective, numbers yeah. perspective. It's just like even the respect of the fact that all those male rappers having me on that song was a stamp of approval from all of them. Yeah, because they were yeah. like, yeah, we can be on a song with her. And even when I shot the video, they all were like, we're going to be around you. So yeah. they did like almost like a cypher circle around me. And it's kind of like just validating you as an artist. Not that you need validation from male rappers as a female artist, but in that period, so early in my career, it was amazing to be able to get that kind of stamp of approval from that caliber of artists in hip hop. Do you feel that um, this conversation about male, female in hip hop is we need to keep it going or we need to cut it out? What kind of conversation? About like how it's like a female rap, a female rapper, and like male rap rappers, they sort of look at a female rapper like, like they kind of handicapped or something, you know? I don't think male rappers look at female female rappers as handicapped at all. I think there's a lot of male rappers that I've had conversations with that are big fans of female rappers. I yeah. mean, Buzzy Lee, the first time I heard about her was from Ricky. Like he was oh, such wow. a fan of her. You know what yeah. I mean? D Koala, same thing. The first yeah, time I really yeah, heard about yeah. D Koala was because Ricky was a fan of her. So yeah. I think um, even with um, Okay Malum Cool Cat and Shoma Josie, the first time I heard about Shoma Josie was through a feature yeah. or working with Okay Malum Cool Cat. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think they look at us as a handicap at all. I don't I don't think that's even a conversation to talk about. There's a lot of male rappers that really are big fans of female artists. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Aman Tombazani happens. Mm -hmm. At which point do you get in conversation with your V? Oh, um, I'd known your V for a long time because he used to date Boiti and Boiti went to my varsity. Yeah. So I used to see him on campus and yeah. then I, I was working with Ganja Beats back in the day and so was he. So I used to bump into him at studio and stuff. Um, he did a song with Young Slugs back in the day. I forgot what it was called. Um, I don't remember, but yeah. I remember the, I was at the video shoot, I was in the video, and um, I've always kind of known him. But the conversation of signing to Family Tree kind of happened years later, once I had left um, Sid Records and all of that. And, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I mean, you, you just fresh off a very trending conversation about how you handle that interview. You know, yeah. and as I was as I was driving here, I was just laughing to myself that Nadia has put our reporters and podcasters in a very com uncomfortable position. Because I think <laughs> for the most part, people will always look at you and think anything goes. Yeah. But I think the way you handle that conversation really kind of got people thinking about like, um, things, issues that female rappers have to deal with. Yeah. And I think in, in the broader scheme of things, what Daryl I think I was trying to get to was that the conversation that you are a female rapper is problematic because you are a rapper. No one no one identifies Casper as a male rapper mm. when there's a conversation about hip hop. Mm. He's always a rapper. Mm. So I think um, you guys have really pushed, I mean yourself as a rapper, you've earned the strides. If you yeah. look at like what you said, Amanto Mbazana, and how that was received and how you held it down. I think um, you have really earned the right to, 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 put, to speak the way you speak. Thanks. But like, I, I, I wanna come back to this, to this recent interview. Why did you feel the need to address it the way you addressed it? Um, honestly, it's, it's, it wasn't even a thing of I felt the need to address it. It was natural to me to address it that way. I don't think I would ever want to be in a position where I compromise myself yeah. because of someone else's thoughts or perception of what they think I'm about or their thought process. I'm not going to call them out and say, you know, and just be problematic because once I do that, when a girl throws her toys out the cart, it's not seen as empowering and she's a boss, it's seen as she's being bitchy and rude, you know, mm. so you always have to be so much more cognizant of how you're speaking to people, any, even if they're disrespecting you, you yeah, know, yeah. and how to educate people during that disrespect. I think that's the biggest, pow most powerful thing that you can do is when someone is disrespecting you, it is based out of ignorance and if you are able to shed light on that certain ignorance that they're portraying in that moment, I think that's where I walk out of that situation with yeah. You know, instead of just being pissed off and getting angry and saying screw you and walking out of the stadium, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to disrespect Kai FM. I'm not going to disrespect the other people that were in the room. Yeah. I'm not going to disrespect Sammy T either because he's a legend in his own right. But yeah. I think in that moment, I you could see I was annoyed, yeah. but I was able to get my composure back and just be like you know what, let me just deal with this and explain to him what it really is about and I yeah. think that's what I did so. so obviously I mean a lot of times when you have these conversations in the moment you might not be able to predict to anticipate the reaction the, 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 the audience reaction when you watched it after because I'm sure you did yeah. what, what are sort of your feeling towards how you handled it um, it was as cringe as I felt it was when the situation was happening, yeah. but I think I, I never expected it to get as big as it did. It became like super viral, you yeah. know, but I also didn't want people to really like keep going in at Sammy T himself because he is a legend, but it's unfortunate because he became the representation of how men in the industry equate women's successes or overlooks women's successes and attributes it to it has to do with a man or you known for your sexuality or you known for the way you dress and it became for me a more social conversation of what people think men think about women you yeah, know yeah. and it's just unfortunate that it had to happen to Samiti because I think he is smarter than that I think he is more woke than that but I think in the moment just I don't know what happened in the moment but yeah. all I'm saying is that it's just unfortunate that it had to be him but it's shedding light on the situations that we have of how men portray or see women yeah. in certain industries and I think that's why all the women were in arms I was also like uh because it's cringeworthy like yeah. don't say Nadia the naked chick my, yeah. I know my album is Nadia naked, naked yeah, but yeah. call it Nadia naked yeah. respect me enough to know what my album is called and yeah. then ask me why I called it that there's yeah. a reason why I called yeah, it yeah. you know but for you to say the naked chick I was just like oh you know yeah. but I can't take his words back for him yeah. you know I can't be like stop mm. you know do it better. It's yeah. unfortunate that, it, yeah. It, it was, a great, it was a great schooling moment, and I think it's really dope how you handled it. But you know, I'm also curious at the same breath, I mean, you have had to exist in a space that's, that's predominantly male dominated yeah. for the most part. Are, are there like perceptions and misconceptions around girls Always. having to slip the way or whatever? Is that something that you have had to interact with yeah. in your own journey? Always. I mean, that's always a conversation with almost every female in any industry. It's a lot of the plot lines for a lot of movies. If yeah. there's a woman that's in an architectural company and she becomes the boss, they already think she's sleeping with the other with boss. The, yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. but it's never the other way around. It's never the guy 
got to the top because he slept with somebody it's always on his merit and his and his work ethic and that's just the conversation that i think needs to change that people need to understand especially on our continent you know i think it's yes in the other continents they there's, there's still the same kind of conversations but in our continent it's so different because of the way the man is portrayed culturally in our households and culturally in our society yeah. that when a woman is doing so well it's like mm, are you really though like yeah, did you really, yeah. did you, really you know do it yourself? did you really do it yourself yeah. then they start trying to find i mean for me i would, no matter who i take a picture with i could take a picture there's one time i took a picture with black Liz and the conversations were nadia and black Liz are dating oh, oh, and man. i was just taking a picture you yeah, know yeah. I know him, I've known him for a long time. So I end up having to think about the people I take pictures with and what are the conversations that have come from there. I mean, me signed to um, Casper's label, people think I slept with him to get there and I'm yeah. just like, I always have to defend that. But yeah. no, why don't you ask him why he signed me to his ra- label? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. was his benefit of signing me to his label? But you know, there's always those conversations as a girl. It's yeah. actually really unfortunate. You, got, you guys had an incredible run though, you know, when, yeah. when you were at Family Tree, I remember when Raga came out, just the yeah. energy when you guys would hit the stage like every time you guys hit the stage it'll tear everything apart yeah um, what, what's the one thing that you really miss about those days I think what I miss the most is how we used to move like a a, 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 a prat yeah. not a, a rat pack or yeah. we were it was like Gemini Teho myself Ricky the twins all of us were just like it was a movement which yeah. was exciting and then the other end Ricky was also with the boys and bucks boys yeah, and it was just yeah. like and then they were like our cousins so yeah, they would, like, yeah, would have yeah. like things and then we'll go all together and it'll be literally about 15 of us Damn. you know and it was just so nice being able to like have that kind of like and also being the only girl you felt like you had all these big brothers yeah. it was just the movement was just dope but it's different you all everyone has to grow everyone has to progress and when you get older you end up getting more comfortable being an individual and also showcasing your individuality like that but that's what i miss the most is just how we used to pull up the pull up was strong it was too strong it was strong so so it's, it's just it's just uh, interesting for me like from a relationship point of view because obviously you know i i, I personally reflect on relationships that I, I had for a long period where we shared a lot of positive things yeah i mean obviously i don't think you and Caspar get to be in the same spaces as much as you used to back in the days is that something that bothers you do you look at it and feel a type of way obviously there's the growth side of it to say yo it's a cool little it's Badala, we're doing our own thing and that's life but yeah. do, do you do you look at how things have played out relationship wise does it bother you in terms of um the thing is that right people now. obviously can see that we're not as visibly together as we were before when i was signed to his label but we're still cool i saw him the other night at a party we greet each other we have a chat and we continue with our lives as it always has been but obviously it's not the way that we used to push it before yeah. but um i would never like i said over and over again i'd never disrespect Cass like that because he really put my career on a pedestal mm-hmm. and he gave me that limelight that i needed that push that i needed so um you know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't an artist I was signed to Family Tree and associated with him, but um, it's not the same. It's changed. And, yeah, yeah. And purely off the music-wise, it's just like he's not as involved in my in my business and my music, and that's okay because you need to grow. Yeah. Um, he did the same thing when he left WHP. Yeah. Um, and it's just a rite of passage. It happens. Mm. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was looking at some of your moves, some of your business moves, and your music moves, and I was yeah. just thinking to myself, damn. This girl is one of the few very successful female rappers on the continent. Yeah. Does that put you in a different place in terms of, you know, um, if you're a rapper, there's like a million other male rappers who have excelled at this thing, but you're one of the few ladies who have found massive success at, at rapping. Uh, does that, does that, is your responsibility a bit different from the typical artist, like as in young girls are looking at you? Do you feel pressure um, in terms of the expectations on you as a lady? I don't game. I don't feel pressure because I feel like yes I could I could say that I've done enough excuse me yeah. I feel like I've done enough to my standard I feel like I've done enough I could 100% do more but when I say I've got if I had to say I'm pressurized yeah. it would feel like there's so many things I still need to achieve and yeah. there are female rappers in the game that are killing it as well and it's not like it's just sitting on my shoulders alone yeah. you know um it's a team effort but i just think that i'm at this point in my career where i'm not pressurized by anything i'm not trying to be the number one female artist i'm not trying to be the number one rapper i'm not trying to be the most booked person in the world i'm those are the things the younger me was cared about about, you know now i'm not i feel like i've done what i did and i'm happy with what i did obviously there's gonna be more things that i want to do but it might be in different industries and different spheres but music you always got to keep the main thing the main thing which is music and i love music but i'm not pressurized like oh i have to drop an album so i can get 
nominated for the awards. No, yeah, that's yeah. not where I'm at anymore. Yeah. I used to be like that, yeah. but I'm just like, okay, you know what? It doesn't change my booking fee anymore. Mm. It doesn't do anything for me other than giving me an award I can put on my on my mantle. Yeah. But the things that um, contribute to my bank account, yeah, that's what I care about. That's what I care about. But I just get the sense <laughs> that you really, I mean, you have cemented your legacy. You know, yeah, well, cause, I hope so. No, because of course, I mean, like, we can't have a conversation about top female rappers on the continent and we don't mention your name. So I think a lot of comfort that you're highlighting and projecting right now stems from just you being content yeah. with your run, you know? Thank you. I appreciate that because it's, it's, you sometimes, as every artist, I think you always have cases where you doubt yourself and you're like, oh, do people really see me the way? I mean, I've been left out of so many conversations all the time, you know? Yeah. But with this situation the that happened. The baddest one. Yeah, the, the, the baddest, baddest one, the baddest remix. <laughs> no, I'm talking about actual like like yeah, um, just, lists yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, MTV yeah. hottest lists and awards and whatever. I've always been left out of those type of conversations, you know. Yeah. But um, what I really loved about the situation that happened um, with Sammy is that I saw how people actually acknowledged me for me as an artist. You know, yeah. people were like we know Nadia from Nami, we know Nadia from Netflix, we know Nadia from Raga, we know yeah. Nadia from Redbat, we know Nadia from all my accomplishments that people don't always have to talk about every single day. Yeah, yeah. Them talking about it then just like also gave me such a confidence booster to be like, you know what, even though I'm not hearing it every day, the people that matter know they what know I've done in on. this game. You know, yeah. they know what's going on. They appreciate me. They gave me my flowers in that moment, which yeah. was really amazing. So shout out to you guys at the OVU. Yeah. How how has how has um, the reality show um, yeah. uh, boosted your brand and everything? The reality show, listen, you can't even underestimate the level that Netflix is on. Yeah. It's super international. I saw. I think I, my fan base grew a million followers when wow. Netflix dropped. Damn. Like literally, it was like amazing. And I'm seeing the comments, and I've got fans from all over the world. And then when we saw the the list of where we were number one, it was crazy because I think we're number one or number two in Jamaica, which is very big because it was. I think we dropped the same week or two weeks prior to um before uh, after Top Boy. Oh, Top shit. Boy does very well in Jamaica and Netflix because yeah. there's a lot of a Jamaican influence in there. So yeah. the fact that we did so well in a Caribbean um, climate yeah. as Africans, it shows that they identify with us too and they want to know what's going on at the African continent. And a lot of the times as Africans, we look at them as Caribbeans, you know, yeah. but they're Africans too and they're yeah. thinking what's happening here. And the fact that it did so well is amazing. It's the exposure is yeah. nuts. Your hair looks incredible. Why were they roasting us now? I don't huh? know. And they roasted <laughs> us as a whole continent. <laughs> <laughs> they really got yeah. into us. You know, the Americans were not happy. I don't know why. I didn't think it was that bad. It was, okay, some things were good, but, you know. Uh, quite, a, quite a lot of it was, was good. <laughs> They really got into us. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. You, you, know, you know, it's it's crazy because um, when we watched uh, the, the, the Netflix, um, the, ne the, 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 the season, um, you were actually in a relationship at the time. I was. And, and there were certain things happening in the show yeah. that didn't speak to your current situation right at, at that time at that time yeah so i'm just quite curious uh, how were you interacting with that because obviously i'm sure you and your boyfriend were watching that what was that a bit awkward for you watching that me my boyfriend now my boyfriend, your boyfriend now oh now he hasn't watched it he hasn't watched it no 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 oh, he refused yeah. to watch it oh, yeah, yeah, no, I think <laughs> he didn't watch it, it his best yeah interest? <laughs> no he didn't watch it at all yeah and that's fine i can respect that yeah because <laughs> it was just like okay you know because no. you know yeah no, but also with him i wouldn't want to watch anything that he was doing with his exes as well I mean, yeah yeah nah, yeah so i get it but, but not like your ex was in it anyway right no and he wasn't like dominant in all the episodes because i mean we we're talking there was so much more going on like the relationship with me and kanye was a dominant thing yeah, they really yeah. liked our interaction. My little rift that was happening with Zari was also a topic there as well. So it really wasn't about my relationship. It was more about the, the dynamics with the woman that was going on at yeah. that time. And I mean, with Swanky as well. Swanky is someone that I've known for a very long time. Um, he actually, we got exposed to each other because he was a fan of my music and he used yeah. to just tag me on my songs, at these shows and all of this stuff. Yeah. So we kind of became like social media friends. And then we became friends when I went um, to Nigeria for the Afrimas and whatever. And then when he joined... When I mean, we both joined the show, we became much closer. So it was more about the dynamics of the cast members, really. Yeah. But either or, he just was just like, I ain't watching that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> but now, so uh, in this season, that is it featured in any way? Because obviously, Who? your boyfriend, is, does it make an appearance of sorts in this new season? You know, see, one thing you need to know about me is I love loudly. I'm not a person that can hide whoever I'm with because I'm so like, they're part of my life and my decisions. And, you know, so for him to be featured on the show, You'll have to wait and see, but I definitely talk about him on the show because yeah, I mean, yeah. people will ask me about my relationship and who I'm with and what's happening, and because honestly, 
the cast members. Mm -hmm. We generally get along. We generally are friends. Except yeah. sorry, but I mean, like, you know. <laughs> but we generally are friends. So it's like it's not scripted. So they generally will ask me things about my life. You yeah. know. Yeah. So you can definitely expect me talking about them on the show. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. That must that must be so awkward. Like you're the only person that people don't mess with. Is it because she's so wealthy? Who, Zari? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Zari and I are fine now. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it wasn't because she was so wealthy. I don't know. Did you watch the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Um, I just didn't like the way that she was just too forward with Annie and Annie's situation and Annie's husband. And I felt like, you know, especially if you marry. For me, I don't care. No woman's stepping up to my man and pulling my man aside yeah. from there. Why are you doing that? I'm sorry, no. And as girls. In a, excuse me as girls in a group we should be together in a group you yeah, know yeah. but I feel like once you start doing things that are weird to, and to people that are married yeah. that's like a different level of disrespect and I just didn't like that you know but I feel like also Zari is extremely misunderstood yeah. but wait for season 2 yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> so you know how, how much of yourself is is in that season because i mean obviously you're aware that the camera is on you yeah so how much uh, do you go through a phase where you're like actually you know my real reaction is like a 10 but i'm gonna give this a five because it's in my best interest to give it a five to be honest with you doing reality is not like this setup right now when mm. you're sitting there and the lights are on you you don't feel the camera no you do feel the cameras you okay. do to an extent yeah. but with reality you don't because i'm not stagnant i'm not sitting here i'm moving around i'm talking to people yeah. there's a lot of things going on that you end up forgetting that the cameras are there yeah. you know yeah. a lot of the times it'll be after the shoot and i'm like damn maybe i shouldn't have said that yeah. i pray they don't use that part of the show yeah and you know because you're not sitting there editing with them yeah but yeah. you actually really forget that they're there um, and a lot of the times when we drank, it's even worse, right? Because yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, not even yeah. going to be cognizant of what you're saying most of the time. Yeah. But um, that's why I think it's so reality based. But I think you can't take away the fact that people go into shooting with a game plan. Yeah. And yeah. that's fine. As in, you can go into the game plan and say, this is how I want to be portrayed, this is how I'm going to act. But in the moment, it is what it is. Yeah. Anything yeah. happens. Yeah. You, you know, know talk, talking family and relationships, there was a big conversation around how you and Zintle sort of embraced each other publicly and, and you know, and privately. Yeah. Uh, what, what, I mean, obviously, you, you don't ever kid yourself. Yeah. So where, where does that wisdom come from? Um, to be wisdom? able to say that oh. we need to co-parent in a healthy way and, yeah. and the way you guys have been and also you being open to that yeah because it's not like you have a personal point of reference where you can say i also have a baby daddy and you know, oh yeah i hear you so where does the wisdom yeah stand? honestly because he is the first person that i've dated that actually has a child that's like you know there present yeah. present and you know but um I think also what contributes to it is that they both have a healthy co-parenting um, situation between them, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, I've always respected her as an artist, as a mom, as a businesswoman. She's somebody that I look up to yeah. and I've always looked up to even prior Keenan. So walking into the situation, she really made me feel comfortable. I didn't feel that weird energy from her like, oh my gosh, I really don't like you being around with And she really embraced me, which yeah. made me then also become comfortable. And also Keenan kind of set the precedence for both of us as well to make me feel comfortable as his girlfriend. And not make me feel weirded out by any situations or whatever he really was cognizant of making sure that i feel absolutely comfortable and when i got to meet um his daughter she's the sweetest kid ever she's like so respectful i can see all the juices that they put into her she's yeah, yeah. she's really well like she's well-rounded she's yeah. a good kid you know yeah. so i love being around her as well so everything just became easy and i think god just made sure that everything worked out perfectly the way that it was meant to be because i believe everything that happened yeah, is god's reason. it's god's doing yeah. you know um if if we went back to the time when the baddest remix was dropped and we were like, yo, you're gonna in a couple of years you're gonna be dating this guy. Who knew? Yeah. What what would you have said? I would have said no ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. I hardly even an, interacted with him that much, you know. But it's like, it's crazy. That's why I keep saying it's God because who would have thought that we would have been able to even get exposed to each other the way that we yeah. did and come together the way that we did and and just now we're just building our lives together and it's wild. I don't know how to explain it, but I just attest it to God. God, that's the only person that can make things like this yeah. happen that just don't make sense <laughs> sometimes did you guys have the conversation though about about the yeah. baddest remix yeah at we what did. point do you guys well, in the relationship 
Um, no, I think I've spoken to him about it even before because I did my own version. Yeah. And I was performing my own version and his record label sent me like a cease and desist. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to stop performing the version, yeah. it's illegal. <laughs> so it's like, you know, so there's a lot of times that I actually spoke to him about it and he was like, yeah, you know, I just, I wasn't loving you then. Hey, I really mm. just wasn't trusting you. And I'm just yeah. like, it's okay because my version did better. I'll shine yeah, it by myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and we had spoken about it like years ago. You yeah. Know, but it's not a discussion. It's, it's, yeah, but, but so it's clear that at that time you really would have loved to be on that song and it's really hurt your feelings not not being on the song at the time um yeah of course i would have loved to i mean he's an amazing artist he's a huge artist the song was massive yeah. and, and also and the, all I the ladies there and it's yeah. like why am i not there yeah and i think i would have been okay with not being there but i feel like the energy with the release and the energy from people on social media made it a problem like that. for me. He okay. made it like that. Okay. Okay. So that's why it ended up even causing issues with some of the, the female rappers on the song because yeah. I started picking up like subs and stuff and I like I even sat down and spoke to Gigi about it because yeah. Gigi and I she had always been my sister at the beginning and yeah. I felt like she handled that situation weirdly and yeah. we sat down and we spoke and I like I felt like this and then she explained her perspective and I was like oh okay maybe it was really fueled by the fans and yeah. you know things that I misunderstood but I felt like I trended on the day that that song yeah, dropped, you yeah, know, so sure. I think they also felt like, she's not on the song, why are you guys talking about her, yeah, and, yeah. you know, so it became really nasty and ugly, mm. and I didn't like that, so I then ended up removing myself from all of them, I'm yeah. just like, uh, you know what, I'm not going to even entertain, because yeah. obviously there's a problem, I don't know what the issue is, and yeah. I just felt like I was really hurt about the whole situation. It, it, it was probably fueled by the fact that um, you were with Family Tree. I wasn't yeah. then. You, oh, you wasn't? No, But you were heavily affiliated. Though. I wasn't. I only signed to that actually was the thing that made Cass say, Okay, the let's take Nadia oh, because really? she's been left but, alone. But you yeah. are you were affiliated though, weren't you? I wasn't. You I weren't. was with Cypho and then I was by myself and then the conversations kinda of started I think like uh, that week mm. because he was his thing was it wasn't a, a jab to like Keenan, it was a jab of like, Okay, you are now become the outcast. Yeah, so I'm yeah. actually gonna take you and mold you and make you that's why I can never turn my back on Cass because yeah. when I felt like everybody had turned their back on me, he yeah. was there and he yeah. said, Listen, let's go, let's do this thing yeah. because there's talkability around you yeah. you're trending off the song there's a lot of potential let's go i'm gonna do this with you you so, know so wh why do you think i mean we all thought at the time you were assigned to a family tree or affiliate no. why, why, why is that what people assumed at the time because, because it sounded like it's a family tree versus no so what happened was um bash um bash vision yeah. was with family tree bash yeah. used to manage me in varsity mm, okay so i always knew them and tilly i knew spike i knew, mm, sorry spike i knew i knew the whole team yeah and then we were in zimbabwe for a gig they were booked at another gig and i was at, at a gig with um queen v yeah. and we bumped into, into each other at the airport and yeah. i've always just known them I, they were my people i wasn't i didn't know Keenan's people. They, yeah. I didn't grow up with them. I yeah, didn't grow yeah. up. We don't go to the same schools. I went to school in Kenya. Yeah, so yeah. I, when I was in South Africa, they were the people that I knew. Bash is from Bots. He's got Zimbabwean heritage. Um, Casper was from Botswana, and he's got not Botswana, Mafi King, and he's got oh. Malawi background. Yeah, yeah. My little brother's half Malawian. So I kind of like resonated with them more you okay, know so okay. they were the people that i just knew yeah and also because of the monash situation and in varsity so i knew them yeah. but it wasn't a thing of this versus that i actually only signed to family tree long after that i guess i guess out. to us the public it looked like you're affiliated because yeah. you'd hang around them quite a bit yeah. pictures yeah. would come out you know no I mean? for sure i did yeah. um, they yeah. were they were my people even yeah. ricky i mean the song that i did with uh, amanto mazana remix was long before i signed family i yeah. still sid records then yeah. and then um he was on do like i do no was ricky on? no no no, he, no wasn't. he wasn't i did do like i do as well so those are the people that you i killed that thank you so yeah, much you so those are the big features that i did before i signed family Chief. so that was the side that i was like more affiliated with 100%, okay. but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Um, obviously, you, you, you dropped a new single now, Slim Thick. Yes. And and uh, there was a very prominent theme. Yeah. From you know your verse on Amanda Mazani because you you have you, you you do mention a lot of you, you do mention <laughs> your you know physique. Your physique. <laughs> well, the song uh, was about women. I had yeah. to. <laughs> but it's you know, physically fit. Uh, yeah. Physically fit. Yeah. To, to what, why why has has that has those thematics? always been important to you is that something that you you are conscious of yeah is that you, you, you pursued consciously consciously a hundred percent because um the reason why i it's not the only topic matter that i have by yeah. the way people yeah. need to listen to the album i have different topics yeah. Yeah. but i mean also the first song that went plaque i got a plaque for is more drugs which wasn't talking about my body it was talking yeah. about breakups and yeah. emotions yeah. and stuff but to your question yeah. the reason why that was cognizant especially on that song was because one they were speaking about women so yeah. and two 
I I feel that I resonate with women who talk about things that I like. And yeah. Women love their thick thighs, their yeah. slim waist, their nice boobs, their makeup, their hair, their yeah. nails, how clothes fit on their hips. And, yeah. you know, so when they're in the mirror busy singing to themselves, that line resonates with what's going on in their, in their situation at the moment, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's it's just what it is. But, I mean, I've, I've obviously talked about my physique and whatever, um, in other songs but because that's what girls like people yeah. think I'm doing it to entice men no mm. men don't always want to listen to that stuff we to be honest don't. you don't yeah, you guys yeah. don't but women like if you listen to like city girls and they're busy talking about pr- pussy uh, pop pussy yeah. girls love that I love listening to that because yeah, it yeah. empowers me it makes yeah. me feel like okay I'm coming through my big dick energy but with my pungla <laughs> because yeah. you know because that big dick energy has always been about guys yeah. so they're empowering women to feel as powerful Alphas men do when they pull through with their big dick energy. Yeah. We come through with our brr, pop and pussy energy. Mm, yeah. You know, it's giving us that attitude and that energy. Yeah. So it's really for the girls, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, for sure. have, you, have you always been this confident? No. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. What, what has that taken you to get to a place where you you as confident as you are? Because, I mean, obviously, Amandum Bazan remixes it like a long time ago. But even with that, when you listen to the song, you came across as someone who's saying, listen, I know myself, I know what I'm about. I did it though. Yeah. You didn't? I didn't. I was so young. I yeah. mean, that was the period that I was in now. Even the way that I sound on that song is not how I sound today. Yeah. Um, but I'm not I'm not a confident person naturally. I, I force myself. You know, okay. I'm a girl at, this, at, at the end of the day. I'm very emotional. I'm a Taurus as well because we're super hectically sensitive. Yeah. But but being confident and just being mature are two different things. You yeah. know, confidence is something that if I get my hair done today, it'll contribute to my confidence. Yeah. Okay. If I recorded a dope song today, it'll contribute to my confidence. But at the same time, I can record that dope song in studio, but when I release the song, my confidence might be a bit tricky yeah, because now yeah. other people are listening to the yeah, song and contributing yeah. and having opinions. So my confidence always fluctuates. Today yeah. I'll be confident, tomorrow I'll be a mess. It's yeah. just the way life is. But I think maturity, mature, is a constant thing. And that's what I've been able to achieve because I've just grown up. I've yeah. grown up, a lot of life lessons, a lot of things that I've gone through have just contributed to me just being constantly mature about things. Yeah. But the confidence thing kind yeah. of like, you know, yeah. <laughs> changes. To talking the things that you deal with on a day-to-day basis and you're like your low moments, what, who do you run to? I mean, outside your boyfriend, yeah. over the years, how did you have to deal with like the issues that are the things that you you were not when you didn't feel too great? Yeah. Uh, when you not feel you know when because I you know I always wonder you in music, there's just so many peaks and lows. Yeah. How are you? Ne- how do you navigate those? Um, definitely my friends, my friend circle. But this year has been extremely tough because I've lost a lot of people in my life. Yeah. This year, not from death, sorry, yeah, 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 but yeah. Um, just from us going our separate ways growth. and and growth and yeah. you know and just understanding things differently. And um, I still have my friends, but um, I think I've gotten to a point where I've learned well learning to be self sufficient with my emotion and how to regulate my emotions. You yeah. know, because at the end of the day, you can't always run to people. And this is so funny because my mom would tell me this when I was a kid. Yeah, she'd be like, "Friends will not always be there. You mm. must remember family and whatever and whatever." You know. Mm. And as I grow older, I'm realizing that my friendship circles are getting smaller, yeah. and my family dynamics are getting bigger. Mm. Okay. It's getting more important to re- um, reconnect with my family members. And mm. now it's gotten a thing like if I don't speak to like my boyfriend, then I'll probably speak to his mom, or I speak to my mom, or I speak to his brother's girlfriend or you know there's it's become like about the family dynamic that's kind of more of your support system but necess- than your friends necessarily but I still have my friends it's just that they're building their family dynamics now so they've got their boyfriends and their ecosystem that they're leading on to so sometimes when we talk on the phone it's not always about talking about our issues it's just more like oh friend you good you good how's your man okay cool how's the baby so okay shut you know it's, it's become now surface level yeah. and the deep stuff has been like who I speak to about with my mom mm. Or my aunt and I'm like oh gosh this is how I'm feeling I'm crying I'm sad and that's what it, it wasn't like that before mm. it was always my friends and I wouldn't even bother my parents about and my family about my emotional well-being mm. and it's crazy when you get older and you start seeing those things that your mom used to tell you back in the days and say ah oh, okay you got now. you got 20 friends okay <laughs> we'll see yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see now when you got third, two, you, got two yeah. you know and it is what it is it's fine uh, let me let me ask you something a bit, <laughs> maybe a bit controversial mm-hmm. um obviously when when you signed to Family Tree, uh, you signed with Seho, Gemini. They were there before me. Yeah. Oh, they were the there. Last one. Okay, well, you're the yeah. last one. So mm-hmm. it was three of you, right? Yeah. And all of you left, um, and it seems like everyone else left, and there wasn't 
good blood between them and Cass, yeah. right? What, what, what do you think the reason for that is? Do you think that he was a good boss or...? You see, what people need to understand is that Cass, yes, he was the head of the record label, but he had a lot of people that were placed into positions to kind of like help run it. To run the And team. then a lot of us would place our own people there, mm. you know. Um, but I do think that when men work together, it's very different. The, ego. the egos will always come in. Not yeah. saying that Cass wasn't done wrong or Tejo and Gemini weren't done wrong or whoever was involved weren't done wrong. But I think a lot of egos causes a lot of breakups. Even between Cass and Ricky, I think it, that could have been sorted out if the egos were just left at the door, yeah, you know? Yeah. But um, I think with me, it's different because I knew how to humble myself in certain places mm -hmm. and I knew what I needed from the label, yeah. you know? That was different from what Tejo needed from the label and what Gemini needed for the label. Yeah. So therefore their own experiences were completely different to mine, mm. you know, and when I left I didn't leave on bad blood. Yeah, we we yeah. spoke about it. It was good and I just like I'm gonna try sign my own deal with Universal which didn't happen But the reason why I left was I wanted to sign Braga Records Directly because I was with yeah, they were servicing me through Family Tree. Okay, so I actually didn't have a contract with either of them I didn't yeah. have a contract with Family Tree. I didn't have a contract with Universal yeah. But because Family Tree had a contract with Universal they were servicing me mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that I couldn't get because I was in science, so I couldn't get like my numbers for Namin mm. from the DSPs because they had to send it to the label. But then there was like the label was, doesn't want to give you those. No, numbers. it wasn't that. It was yeah. the person that Cass had put in charge of that for the mm. artists had left and the codes had changed oh, and they were man. disgruntled. Mm. So you know, so he couldn't even try fix the situation, like yeah. because he's like, I've put people in place to do these certain things. Now they've done and messed me up, and I can't even get it all back full circle because yeah. people are just being funny. Now, yeah. You know, so I couldn't even. Uh, there's no way I could be mad at him mm. because Cass is not going to be sitting there looking at my numbers, yeah. Yeah. guys. And that's what people think he's doing. He's not sitting there in it's the meeting saying, "Make Nadia Brandon best." No, yeah. his he's put, too big. He's too well. big, and yeah. he's an artist himself. Yeah, but yeah. what he did is put people there and yeah. allow us to put people there, you know, and then use Build the machine. Yes, that makes a lot of and sense. And then use the machine of him and family tree to push our genders. Yeah. But yeah. then when things got tricky, it's like you can't. Th for me, like you can't then look at Cass because you know. There's He's not machine. doing it. Yeah, yeah, there's a machine. Mm. You need to do it with the machines, mm. you know. So that's what the I think the biggest problem yeah. was happening with with um, a lot of record labels, not just yeah. us. I think a lot of people. But I also pick up that at, at that specific moment uh, when when there was that drip between Casper and Tejo and Gemini Major, and you were sort of caught in between because you still existed in both their lives. Yeah. Uh, did that not create problems? No, it didn't. And you know the thing is that also what people need to understand is that Sejo and Casper's relationship, I think, even predates being signed to Family G. Yeah. You know, they've known each other from for a very... Even Mafi Gang. Like, yeah. they're both from there, you know? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, you know, I, I, there's certain things that I wouldn't even try even talk to Sejo about because Sejo is like my best friend. Yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, I won't even try to get involved. But And he also wouldn't put me in that position of making me feel like I needed to choose because he knew my journey was my journey. It's yeah, not like we yeah. even shared the same manager, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I knew my things were different. But if I was upset about something, I would definitely go speak to Seho and be like, yeah, what? Mm. But I still was able to discern my thought process and be like, this is how I want to go about it because my issues aren't the same as his issues, oh, yeah. you know? And also it must be easier when you're a female. So much easier. Because that ego is not there. <laughs> yeah. It's not there. And yeah, that's what I was trying yeah. to explain so much that I lost it a lot longer because there was no egos with me mm, and him, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like I saw him as the label head. I, yeah. I saw him as that and he saw me as the artist and that worked for us because I knew how to finesse him if I needed something yeah, because yeah. I'm a girl. I'm yeah. going to finesse you. If yeah. I need this, <laughs> I need you to perform here. Yeah. I know how to, you know, this to maneuver. Yeah, 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 you know? And that's the advantage of being a woman, a girl. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. That's yeah. crazy that she says that because um, it makes me realize how much ego screws up a lot of things. Yeah. Because now, I mean, look at how she was able to maneuver. Like, by the time you live in Family Tree, your brand, like, yeah. the brand deals, like, your brand is so huge. I think you might have top three, if not top five, brands in hip hop, you know, mm. because yeah. you got so many endorsement deals. It was like, it kept coming, you yeah. know, and I'm sure it's still going on right now. It is, but I think I'm also excited about working on stuff that I actually not associated to another brand. I don't want to do collaborations. I want to build my own brand, okay. which I'm doing. Okay. It's going to be launching in Feb. I can't tell you guys yet. Yeah. But, um, I'm working on that because 
the percentages that you see in some of these contracts yeah, is crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're the one that's actually making the doing whole the brand, the you know, yeah, yeah. doing all the work. So I realized, you know what, actually, I want to do something that's mine that I own 100% of and I will put them in stores if I have to or whatever. But right now, I just want to own 100% of it. And I yeah. think that's where the money actually is, yeah. using my brand for me instead yeah. of using my brand to build another entity, yeah. Yeah. you know. Talking about your record label, that you uh, do you have an appetite to sign artists? Is that something that no. you... Not at the moment. I yeah. think I need a lot more capital to be able to sign artists, and I also would want to take a back seat in that realm. Yeah. But right now, I'm still very active in there, so I won't be able to. I need a lot of capital to be able to place people where they need to be placed mm. to do things, you yeah. know. And I don't think that's where I'm at right now. That's probably more of my five to ten year plan. Yeah. Yeah. I read something somewhere that you you exploring. I'm a piano. You have an appetite to actually do like. Not do piano as in like release it, yeah. but collaborate. Yes, yeah. like I did a song called Delicious with Major Steve. Oh yeah, which yeah. was nice. That was yeah, so that exciting. Was a nice yeah. That yeah. was so fun, you know. But I, I'm, I'm not. Shout out Major Steve. Shout out Major Steve. Those yeah, my babies. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not looking to release um, piano music. It's not authentic to me, and you, I wouldn't be able to sell it. Yeah. You know, rap piano. Maybe rap piano, but I, I don't know about rap piano because I would still have to have some element of being able to dance like that, and that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. not me. I wouldn't be able to have that energy and that vibe unless I'm super sloshed, and I can't be super sloshed every time I'm, I'm performing. So yeah. hip hop is my energy. Hip hop is my blueprint. That's yeah. literally me through and through, you know? Yeah. So I could never try jump ship just because it's popping right now, and yeah. then, nah, it's not me. Is it because you have amassed em enough money over the years to feel like, listen, I don't have the pressure to actually just jump onto anything? Cause I don't think about money. No, yeah. sorry to interrupt. I don't think about money, but I've raised enough equity behind the Braga brand yeah. that I don't think I need to do stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And a lot of the things that they're doing, congratulations to them, but I've done it also. I've yeah. gone to London. I've gone to these places. Mm. I've done it. And it's like, I'm, I, I mean, the level that they're doing at 100% is monumental. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I'm kind of getting to this place where I'm trying to reduce. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to reduce being in the club. Mm. You know, I'm looking at like I want to get married and have babies now. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to be traveling away from my my nigga and my family. Yeah, and yeah. I just bought a house and I want to be able to build stuff and do stuff around mm. my house. That's where I'm at now. I'm yeah. not trying to be on tour in the UK for a month. Yeah. No, that's then. Yeah, now yeah. I just want to be pregnant for nine months, have a baby, <laughs> do my businesses, mm, and yeah, you know, and just yeah. be a little bit more low key. I'm mm. also like getting to a point where being in the club is exhausting. Yeah, yeah. like I love it. I'm grateful, but the drinking thing every weekend. Mm. Like my body can't take it the same way anymore. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. You're so it's not just like I'm not 19 anymore. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So my my trajectory of my career is changing. I want to be more on the business side of things. Mm. Yeah. Um. Than necessarily having to go on massive tours. Yeah. Talking <laughs> business. I mean, you, you've been you've been interacting on a business level with different brands and yeah. really collaborated as as an entity yourself. Um, what have been some of the business lessons you have learned over the years that you'd say, listen. These are some of the most important business lessons I've learned through my career. Um, I think business lessons, one that I could say is you need to do things that are best for you. Mm -hmm. Because when you go into a business partnership with any of these brands, you think that they love you. Yeah. They think that they'll do anything for you. But if something had to hit the fan or something just makes them upset, they will drop you right now. Yeah. And you're going to feel like you did this Thing with them and you sacrifice so much for them and you know they're supposed to have your back and believe me they won't Friends, they won't they will Friends, change on you yeah. you know so every decision you make has to be something that you are happy with that helps your bank account makes you content and it has to be about you, you have to be extremely selfish with brands be professional 100% make sure you meet your KPIs and all of that nonsense yeah. but Make sure that you are you are favoring yourself because you are the important brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The collaboration is a plus, hundred percent. But the brand you're trying to build is yours. Don't get yourself messed up because they will drop you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will change their yeah. footing now. Yeah. You know. So. I, I've always wondered: Are you media trained? No, but I have a degree in media studies uh, and yeah. communication. So you are media yeah, trained. Get, I yeah. guess so. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, when you say media trained, I no, thought she's like not, yeah. She's not, she's yeah. Not, yeah, I like, study yeah, but yeah. like sorry, when you ask media trained, I thought like. There's people that apparently train yeah, artists, no, artists, yeah, artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but I have a degree in marketing, media studies, and communications. Because yeah. I mean, you move, you move different. No. Uh, yeah, you move, you move, you move different. From the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, I mean, if, if, to to somebody who's who's trying to get into the music space, a lot of people are messing up the bag with the tweet. And, and yeah. How have you personally been able to still like keep your sense of autonomy? Because 
at, at the core of everything, you still need to be as expressive as you would like to be. Yeah. You still need to speak to issues that yeah. are topical to you. But like, how are you able to, to balance that, to be able to, to be Nadia Nakai as expressive and yeah. as opinionated, but also not mess up with the bag? I think the biggest contribution, I'm not saying this is a plus guys, mm. but I think the biggest contribution that's allowed me not to be like that on social media and mess things up mm. is my anxiety. Yeah. Social media and reading people's comments and things blowing up, I don't handle very well. Yeah. It's not good for me. So like this stuff that happened recently, the fact that it was good was was still giving me major Ooh, anxiety. Yeah. So now imagine if it's bad, bad you know, yeah. Yeah. it's it's it doesn't do well with my heart and my spirit. So I'm not the type of person that will just go off on social media and say, and you, Mara, what and who and what and what, yeah. you guys can all go to hell, my mm. No, because mm. I just, as soon as I put the phone down, my energy is completely just gone. So mm. I don't have the stamina for social media nonsense and wars. And I think that has been at my, at my advantage because yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just not like that. Um, Top five South African rappers. Okay, my top five <laughs> rappers. Yeah. Indigo Stella. She's cool. hard. She's hard. Yeah. I love her energy. And she can sing. Yeah. And she a music connection. Amazing. Um, Questa. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who's your boyfriend um, again? AKA. AKA. <laughs> but honestly, I've been a fan of them. You've been I've a been. fan for, for the longest time. Yeah. Would you have mentioned him back in the family tree days? Yeah, no, maybe not. Ah, that's mm. starting a whole lot I think you shit. actually asked at some point back, but you didn't mention him. Back. No, I said, I think back in the day, I was doing an interview with Liz. Liz is also on my top five. He's iconically yeah. Yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then um, Nasty C. Mm. But I think okay. back then, you it's like. Know. I, I made it very clear. I'm like, I wouldn't, I, I love his music, he's amazing, but I would never have done a song with him. Yeah, and I yeah. said that in that interview because I wouldn't have wanted to cause a riff with Cass yeah, when yeah. I'm signed to Family yeah, G, yeah. you know? But now that I'm not there, obviously, like I said, I won't do anything disrespectful. But for me, I'm growing and I'm also experiencing new palettes. And even if I wasn't dating Keenan, um, if he had said let's work together i would have i'd yeah. be like let's work together i'd be like uh, if i had a song for him i would have sent it to him i yeah. would have and i would have just hoped that cas would have taken that person and just nadia is just growing and now she's a different person yeah, yeah. i think i actually think cas would have let you do it actually. he would have i yeah. think he's, so he's a brilliant business man and i also don't think he's he's um he's what's the word he's not um intimidated by it it's yeah. not it takes nothing from him yeah you yeah. know he's a big artist himself and if i had to have worked with keenan if we weren't dating i doubt he would have been so disgruntled to a point where he would never talk to me yeah again. yeah because it was just like yes on social media they would have had something yeah. to say but um and i think that would have probably contributed to maybe some kind of weird yeah. things mm. but if it's just between me and kaz yeah. i don't think he would have been like oh nadia what the hell like why do I, why were you out do once i've left family tree yeah. yeah but if i was with family tree maybe that could have been a problem yeah. and yeah. I can respect that because yeah. I was under his label yeah, yeah I was about to ask have you guys recorded anything as yet since you guys got into the relationship have you guys yeah. been in the studio together no we've done a lot of music but actually it's funny enough we've done a lot of music together at the beginning yeah. but people actually need to people would be surprised at how much our relationship has nothing to do with music yeah, yeah. like we don't talk about music we're not really recording music now mm. well we did one like a week ago but that's for his album yeah but it's not really about that. Our relationship is about so much more than that. There's yeah. so much more that is going on in our relationship. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, yeah. we don't even talk about what's happening with music or who's trending for yeah. what. Or it's not even part of our vocabulary. It know? must be refreshing, though, because, I mean, music has consumed you for a huge part of your life. Yeah. And I, I, I as someone who has really done, very invested myself a lot in business, I don't want to be in a relationship where we talk about but business, business all the time. 100%. So I'm sure it's it's quite a relief for you to be able yeah. to exist in a relationship where that's not a conversation that's topical like that. No, for sure. And you want to decompress with your partner. You don't even know talking about rap beefs and and, <laughs> and and awards and no, it's like yeah. literally nothing. Literally, I just asked him like recently, I'm like, do you want to go to the SAP awards? He's like, nah. I'm like, me, me neither. We literally chill and watch movies. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> like, yeah. that's where we're at right now, yeah. you know. But yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. So, did we get that top five? We list? got five. Uh, let's see. We got AKA. Yeah. yeah. We got Nasty C. Yeah. We got Questa. We got Questa. Yeah. We got Indigo. Yeah. We did, right? Indigo. Yeah. And then we got. Who's the last one again? For now. Now let me do the. You know it's difficult. She, to be she, honest she with you. She might put Cas, but to be politically correct. I, no, I, I'm a fan of Cas, but it's just like Cas right now hasn't been dropping hip hop, so it's difficult. He's yeah. been doing more of a piano, a piano and piano's not star. really my vibe. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. So I, I love Cas, but I love like the hip hop Cas, and yeah. that I, that's not what he's doing right now. Yeah, yeah. But um, like I, 
the also thing is that I haven't been listening to music. Period. Yeah. I'm just at this place where I'm not listening to anybody. Yeah. And I don't know why. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm not listening to anyone. A- like anybody I, locally. Anyone, even globally. Like oh yeah. Metro Booming's album came out. I haven't even touched it yet. Yeah. The Drake and and um. You're not listening Savage. to music. I'm not listening to music. Oh man. Period. I don't. I think I just need a complete cleanse palette. It's been yeah, a yeah. long time. Yeah. Well, what I'm are you listening. escaping to? What's your what's your escapism? I think t- I'm just watching yeah, shows, reality yeah. shows, YouTube. Yeah. I'm on that kind of steez. I'm watching people buy sneakers on YouTube. I'm mm. watching Food Network. I'm watching um, these, like, a lot of, like, reality stuff, but not, like, reality shows. I don't like, actually, really, it's funny that I'm on one. Yeah. yeah. But I don't like um, Love and Hip Hops and stuff. Yeah. But I'm more, like, on, on reality shows of, like, people going to different um, countries in the world and trying the local food. Yeah. You know, like, that's where I'm at right now. I'm not listening to nothing. Mm. Nothing at all. It's so, it's so it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. In, in the U.S., um, a lot of people go to finish their careers in reality. Yeah. You know, but yeah. with with you guys' show, like, no. this thing is taking it to the next level. But you see why it's different to us is that those people are becoming known again because they're on that reality show. Whereas with us, we're on that reality show because you know us. Mm. So that's why it's not us going to a, rea- a reality show because our career is dwindling. No, we're on the reality show because our career is booming. Mm. You know, like, if you look at Kanye, Kanye was on The Wife, then she was doing a movie, Kanye's then she was on incredible. The Roast, then she was, she like this year, Yeah, it's been She's nuts. killing it. Yeah. She's killing, killing it. it, you know, and that's the difference with our show is that it's not that type of trap TV yeah. show. Yeah. It's literally amplifying people i mean diamond platinum so you can't even say that guy's doing he's been yeah. you know so it's different you weren't feeling diamond no not at all <laughs> <laughs> not at all diamond is very sweet but not at all i just wanted to make music with him and i didn't want to really and i think this is what a lot of women deal with like yeah. when you're not trying to sleep with anybody but you also don't want to f- offend that artist mm. so that it's hard to kind of find like that middle ground of like oh damn i don't want to sleep with you i don't want to go out with you but i don't want to offend you because i just want to be able to work with you yeah. and sometimes when you say no that can be closed off because you know the ego as well the ego yeah. so then like yeah. i don't want to work with you anymore if you're not going to give me you know yeah. so that was the tricky thing with him like i respected him so much and i wanted to be able to work with him yeah but um it became a bit tricky then when i was just like i'm really not about it and i'm just trying to entertain the situation but i'm not trying to take it there mm. yeah and we're not, not working on music but i mean it is what it is it's what we have to deal with how is this do you, do you speak swahili I don't speak Swahili, which is it's crazy. I'm really bad with languages. And I yeah. went to high school in Kenya. Crazy. But I went to an international school. So the problem is that if I had gone to like a local school, maybe yeah. I would have been able yeah. to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. But like I went to an international British school. So my I think there were very few people that were from um, Kenya there. Mm-hmm. No, they were they were there. I mean, but I mean yeah. like my best friend Muthoni, she was um, local. And then my other best friend Naila was from Guinea-Bissau. Um, the one guy I did, his name was Fadil Khan. He was from an Arabic company, uh, uh, company country. Yeah. The, there were so many foreign people that went to my school mm. that the common language I spoke was English and also I'm not really good with language anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so you speak English and what? And Shona. But Shona. also my Shona is a bit it's tricky. A bit tricky. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't been there. I mean, I stayed there when I was in um, primary school. Yeah. yeah, I was born and bred here. Yeah. But then my mom sent me there when she was studying and yeah. I stayed with my granny in Chinoy. And that's where I kind of picked up um, Shona a bit. And then, but when she speaks to me, I understand fully. Actually, it's more of a confidence thing now because Zimbabweans are very patriotic about their language. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah. you're not speaking it right and you have a twang and you have what they really <laughs> dig into you. So yeah. it became a confident, like I'm not confident enough to hold a conversation in Shona because yeah. of the twang that's yeah. going on. But, but I've noticed you, you have had like uh, very cool interactions with some of the rappers from Zim. Like, yeah. Do you have any Zim artists that you'd really mess with? I love Natio. Yeah. I've yeah. always been a fan of Natio and his energy. And his energy. Incredible. Yeah, and his Natio, energy shout reminds Shout out to Natio. Yeah. And his energy reminds me a lot of Gemini. Their yeah. energy, they're very bubbly and they're very yeah. like, you know. So I love actually being around Natio. Yeah. Um, I love um, Ja Praise. He's yeah. a ledge. Winky D. We're supposed to be doing. There's so many times we were supposed to do a song together and it's just, I don't know. He's why. very hard to reach. No, he actually reached out to oh, me. Oh, and I wow. think I was in a bad place. Whoa. I know. I missed really out, and then when I tried to rekindle that conversation, it just kind of like Ish, died. <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh man!" But I think there was a, a problem there. Um, there's a vocalist, um, ta- Takura. Ta- yeah, Takura, ta- incredible. Amazing. I met him when we were in London for a show. Actually, amazing, talented guy. Um, I'm a big fan of him as well. And then 
then there is Gemma. Gemma Griffiths. Yes, she's also incredible. I love the whole Harare girl from Harare mm. vibe yeah, that she's yeah. got going on. I actually did a song with her for my new album coming oh, wow. out next okay. year, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, there was a lady and Queen V, obviously, but I don't oh. know if she's still making music. But mm. she's too rich. She's too rich. <laughs> she's too rich. <laughs> she makes music and she feels yeah, like she it. feels like yeah, it. Yeah, but I loved her energy. Oh, yeah. Did you listen to the Fire Emoji remix? No. Okay. Fire emoji. Yeah. Um, with Kiki Badass. Yeah. yeah. I, oh fuck, how can I forget my girl Kiki? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't forget my girl Kiki. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I haven't listened to the remix, but I listened to the snippet that she did where she posted her verse. Yeah. She's hard as fuck. You she know, guys, what people need to understand. So people got offended when I got nominated for a BET award. Yeah. yeah. I was supposed to be nominated representing South Africa. Yeah. They put Zimbabwe. I don't know. In the UK, they probably saw the Netflix thing. Yeah. I don't know. They put Zimbabwe. Oh, the Zimbabwe behind it. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and my thing is that, like, the reason why I changed it so profusely to South Africa is that I can't represent Zimbabwe when Kiki's there. Yeah. Kiki yeah. is killing it. And she's representing that country. And she raps in, in Shona. And she's working in that country. Yeah, that yeah, if yeah. it has to be somebody that's nominated in Zimbabwe for hip hop, and representing that country, it has to be Kiki. Yeah, it cannot yeah. be me because I'm based here. I'm born here. Yeah. I function here. I resonate with my Zimbabwean heritage, but I can't take that away from somebody like Kiki and be the one person that's being nominated representing mm, Zimbabwe. Yeah, and I'm not sense. active as the way she is yeah. in that country. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just like, hell no. There's no way I'm going to take that away from her career trajectory yeah. and where she's going because I see her reaching those type of levels, yeah. representing Zimbabwe the she way takes that it is. Very, serious. very seriously. Yeah. And she looks amazing. She gets her image clear and yeah. she raps amazing and she's got this hard little Kim sound yeah. and she's like I don't give a damn it about nobody yeah. and I'm just like yo she's doing it better than the guys yeah. you know yeah. and I think she really has the potential to be able to get that mantle on her shelf as BET nominee or winner representing Zimbabwe definitely yeah. and she deserves it more than I ever could yeah. you know yeah. especially not there but here yeah, 100% give me that because yeah. Yeah. I'm running the streets yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in South yeah. you know yeah, yeah. Oh, man. To a young female rapper who is watching you, what message do you have for the um, up-and-coming up rapper? Up-and-coming rapper, I think don't try fast-pace your um, career. I think a lot of um, artists, not just specific to women, want to be massive sensations as soon as they did their first song and their first project. Yeah. And you don't want that, believe me, you want that longevity. You want people to grow with you because it took me so long to get to a point where I could say I've reached somewhat of success, yeah. you know? But one thing I can never change is the people that have grown up with me. Mm. From where I started to where I am today, I've got real die-hard fans and I think that definitely contributes to my success. And it's, they'll tell me stories about me and Shizners years ago, mm. or me dropping this random song on YouTube, not YouTube, SoundCloud, yeah. that I even forgot about. Yeah. And that is, is you can't even compare it's priceless. to. Yeah. It's priceless. You want longevity, not instant hype. Yeah. You want that long game that long game is what's gonna make you survive in this game yeah uh, talking success what's been your money lessons because obviously yeah. you've been at the, in the game when when hip-hop was really paying and we've gone through yeah. the law where hip-hop was it's not really popping shaky. how have you been able to weather the storm financially what has been the, yeah and I actually got this advice from Ricky Ricky told me years ago that I needed to open a business and I had to make sure that I was paying myself a salary instead of eating the monies from my shows and you know those are the things that allow you to be able to get stuff like cars and bonds and stuff mm. because the way that we get our money is tricky it's not like an instant it's not like a salary, salary that you get yeah. every month you know yeah. so that's something that i learned and um ricky was the one that advised me on that and then elicio who i call my dad elicio is the own well the owners of um sumo sumo and yeah. montana and yeah. coco and whatever he shot my first music not my first sorry i'm like but he shot my music video like a me. studio space right? studio space yeah, yeah. yeah. so he, i've known him for a long time so he is like my dad and he's the one that said i need to put you in touch with a broker that can help with your investment account so every oh, time wow. i got big lump sums of of money from my endorsements and stuff half of it would go into my savings so and buying a house is very hard for artists in south africa because of that money uh, the paper trail mm -hmm. a lot of us don't have that so mm -hmm. we can't buy but the grateful thing that i had is that i had that as well as lump sums of money that i could put into a deposit that i've been saving throughout my whole career yeah. so that really helped me otherwise it would have been so difficult to be able to get a bond people think we can't we don't want to buy houses we yeah. do but it's just like we don't have that education of how to deal with our money that you can go to a bank yeah, and say yeah, yeah. can i have a bond mm -hmm. yeah. then people don't know that and luckily for me People told me and I listened and yeah. I saved and I saved and I saved. And also my mom is a financial analyst. Yeah. So the saving bone is in my in my blood. Okay, <laughs> like, okay. I'm just about saving coins. I think I think it's important to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. Nadia said 
open a business account. Your money needs to hit your business account. Pay yourself a salary. Yes. Yeah. And on the same date every month. On the same date every month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then also when you have, if uh, I wish I started saving at like twenty. Yeah. I'd be crazy going down. Yeah. The credit would be crazy. Yo, yeah. not even the credit. Credit is like obviously from your salary yeah. part, but yeah. just saving is like how much money that you You'd have. have. Yeah. yeah. You know, especially if you put it into like a discovery investment, which is what I did. You know, yeah. so I have like my 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 um, life policies, my. I'm retirement done. I, I like literally did things that I would have been able to have if I worked for a corporate, yeah, corporate you know, yeah. to just make sure that everything's okay. But girls are like that. Mm. Girls are like that. I have to now teach a lot of people that I know to like get their money's right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I definitely got that from my mom. My oh, mom wow. is super into like finances and stuff. So what, what are your spending habits like? Right now I don't have spending habits because yeah. The, the pressure of buying a house mm -hmm. it scares me so much it's just like the one thing i, I don't want to do is lose it yeah mm -hmm. so i'm not i used to be very i used to buy wigs from the uk for like fourteen thousand rand yeah. for hair yeah. you know and i look back and i'm like what a dumb dummy you were like yeah but i just wanted to be so different i wanted like five tones in my yeah. hair and it's just yeah. like you know but i mean at that time it, it was an investment brand. as well yeah. it did it worked on for my brand but yeah. now i'm just like i'm not trying to spend any money i don't yeah. know i don't want i'm trying to cut the fat i just want to make sure when this bond Dibble order goes off. <laughs> yeah. There's coins there, yeah. and I'm fine. You know, yeah. and I'm paying my my rates and taxes, and I'm paying my my levies, and and, and I'm good. Mm. That's all it is. So I'm not even trying to buy. I just try to get a whole bunch of free clothes at this point because I'm not even trying to <laughs> shop. <laughs> I'm not even trying to shop. It's scary. It's a lot of pressure. Like it's, it's a lot of pressure. It's weird because I mean, if you look at my piano right now, mm. these kids are wearing expensive stuff. Yeah. Gucci and, I, and and I've been hoping that I would sit down with someone who's been in the game for as long as you've been. Do you think I'm a piano artists are getting more money than hip hop artists? We're it, getting back in the days. Back in the days. Yeah. I don't know about back in the days, but I think right now, hundred percent, they okay. are getting more money. No, I meant like at the peak. Globally. At the, the peak, peak of, of Nadia Nakai. No, not the and, peak. Yeah. No, no, no. Not, not the peak. Not yeah. a chance. <laughs> not a chance. You know the also thing about I'm a piano is that. A lot of the songs you know, but you don't know the artist. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, that's why they can't really charge as much as the hip hop acts yeah. can because because you're the brand. Branding. You're the brand also, so people don't want to just hear you; they want to see, see you. Yeah. They want to be like, "Yo, ah, Christos here, this mm. one. No, yeah. Keenan here is nanny. Oh, there's Rafael. Yeah. Like they know people refer to Keenan as Keenan, not yeah, AKA. Yeah, it's yeah. like, "Yo, hey, Keenan. It's like, what do you mean? Don't know no, me like, that. Yeah. like that. <laughs> But that's how close they are to him as an individual, not yeah. just his music. Mm. So the coins are so different. Whereas a piano artist, even myself, I'll go to an event and I'm like, uh-uh, guys, isn't this song done by Kamunpela? Who's that person on stage singing yeah, a song? Yeah, you yeah, know, but like yeah. a lot of people aren't sure that who's this person. Oh yeah, that's Pabi. Okay, cool, who's that? They don't, okay. Yeah. Actually, Pabi and Pab Kamun yeah. are bad examples because yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we do know them. Yeah, we do yeah. know Pabi, we know Kamunpela songs, we know Kamu. Yeah. They built a brand. Yeah. But there's a lot of these artists and With piano. big songs, who have you big songs that I can't even give you their names because sure. I don't know them. Sure. That's what I'm saying, Pabi and, and Kamu, uh, but yeah. that's even a bad example because yeah. we know them. Yeah. Talking about the ones we don't know. I've actually but then heard. you hear the song, you're like, hey, but now what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, who's this person? Yeah. And I think you know? that's, that's what, I mean, I'm a big as a hip hop fan, but that's like a really dope thing about Ama Piano because it really speaks to the fact that everyone stands a chance. Yes. Because you know, like, if you look at, at your that. peak, hmm. It was, it was really, hard. you could literally count the people who are we're running it. We're running it. But yeah. now it's like there's, you can get a dub joint from anyone. Everyone stands a chance. You know, yeah. Everyone stands a chance. And yes, obviously, I feel like Scorpion Kings are kind of like at the top of that yeah. mantle. Yeah. But um, anyone stands a chance. Anyone can come through and really just topple them and just yeah. have the yeah. number one song in the country. Yeah. It's amazing. And I also think it's also because of the work rate they have. Yeah. The work rate, they're dropping songs like crazy. Every they're other dropping day. the amount of songs that they're dropping is like nuts. And I think that works for them and I've said this before it doesn't work for hip-hop yeah. and we shouldn't try do that that's yeah. not it takes a lot longer to work on a hip-hop song yeah. it's 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 a completely different ball game whereas with piano it's easier to churn out more and that's perfect for that genre mm. and I hope hip-hop acts are not trying to keep up with that pace it's okay that they do that but we need to stick with what we do I you know it took me two years to do my album yeah it took yeah. Keenan two years to do even lemonade like yeah. it took I don't know how many times I heard him keep reworking it and doing camps and camps and camps for that one song for that one well his album but for oh, the yeah. one song mm, as yeah, well you yeah. know so it's completely different 
Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. You don't but think it's changing with Drake dropping almost three times in a year? You, know? you don't know how long those songs he's been working on with Drake, though. Oh. Drake can drop three times a year now, but some of those songs I'm sure he's been working on for long, and especially someone like Drake, who is such a lyricist. Yeah. I know he's naturally good, but I honestly think that on that level of pressure, it's so different. Like, there's no way that it's just as he's not churning out like the way the piano guys are churning mm. out. And on top of that, when they're dropping music, they're doing camps, like writers camps. The people are yeah. submitting songs. They do, <laughs> you know, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff that's behind mm. that yeah. they're not just making music. Like people Pori, don't see. Yeah, yeah. Pori will make a song last night. He released it at twelve today. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, not, that's not what Drake's doing. Yeah. Let me tell you, he's yeah. not doing that. <laughs> and I mean, I, you know I'm sure I mean? Drake is a bigger team. Yeah, in terms of people contributing in different mm. aspects, writing and 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 and. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hundred percent different and i think that's just the way hip-hop is and that's why r&b is and it's different and it's okay like yeah. we shouldn't be trying to do the same stuff yeah. and even the fact that drake is dropping so much i feel like he's even diluting it for me now i don't want to hear him so much yeah, you know me too. It's like, like that's enough. yeah enough, I'm, I'm enough. Fine. like yeah. imagine how we crying for rihanna's album because mm. she made us wait yeah now it's like she's gonna shut down the whole world when she drops that album. Yeah. you know and a lot of these guys like beyonce jay-z kanye all of them will drop albums after a couple years yeah. because they're trying to give that thirst for you True. you know True. That's what hip hop is about. Yeah. It shouldn't be last night drop today. Yeah. Drake, yeah, I'm just, I relax. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just happy um, the DJs are dropping music again because yeah. damn, like Slick and them, they're really, really yeah, coming through right dope. now. I really like that. Song. Yeah, yeah, Slick is in a people really. I really hope that they give him his credit because DJ Slick is such an amazing executive producer. Yeah. yeah. His albums, I don't know how he does it, but he has that golden thread. Like he is so talented. Yeah. Yo, you can listen to his albums and feel like they're an artist, but it's a DJ. But yeah, I yeah. think he's one of the best person, one of the best people that put albums together. Yeah. Yeah. You you credited Ricky for like really teaching you how to say. What were like your last memories of Ricky? The last memory I had of Ricky was so funny because we had gone out to a, a party. Um, those poor parties used to do during lockdown. What are yeah. they? It wasn't called Tanzania. Tanzania wasn't his one. I don't no, know because. No, no. Yeah, yeah. What was it called? His one. I forgot. A poor's yeah. one. But let me tell you how packed that place would get. Yeah. It got so packed. Well, now we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, it's so packed. It's like a warehouse. And yeah. we got locked in. We couldn't leave. And I just remember how annoyed I was. And he was just like, sorry, Auntie Braga. He's like, I'm so sorry, Auntie Braga. Because we, we were coming from the club. He was like, let's go. Yeah. We went. It was me, Teho, Jim, uh, Mategi. I don't know who else. There's a few of us that were there. Yeah. And we two got shoes. locked in. And I literally, two shoes, yeah. yeah shout out and I literally shoes. had to sleep in the car and wait for them because they were finished partying. And I was like, I can't do it. And I was sleeping in the car, waiting for everyone to stop gridlocking us. Yeah. And then I remember calling in the morning saying, I'm so sorry, Auntie Braga. I'm like, it's fine. It's okay. I'm just so miserable. I never went back mm. ever again. Yeah. Because yeah. once you get in, you can't get you can't out. Get out. Yeah. You can't get yeah, out. Yeah. But that was um, the last memory I had yeah. of him. And then the, the last good memory I had of him was when I was working on the album. And he gave me a song with myself and Zuchi Coke Dope. And I really wanted it on my album. And he was just like, I sent him the verse. And he was like, it's so dope or whatever. Oh my gosh, like you have to keep it. You have to keep it like it was so amazing. Because yeah. he sent me the song to like work on it. And yeah. then he's like, you need it. And I'm like, please. And he, he gave it to me. But I don't think it was a song for him to give. Because then Zuchi mm. took it back. And he's like, mm. no, this is my joint. Oh, so shit. I was so heartbroken. I, was, I kept calling him like, please speak to Zuchi. Please speak to Zuchi. And he's like, yo, he's not budging. He's not budging. Yeah. And I was just like, damn. But anyways, but I mean, yeah, we, we never got to do a song together. No. As in like, other than Amandol Mazani remix, which is just unfortunate. No, and, I wish I was able to get And Raga, to. and Raga. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like him oh, featuring on mine okay, and I'm featuring on okay, his. Okay, I got you. I I got have, you we got weren't you. able to do that. So that would have been the first one. So yeah. I really wish I was able to have kept it. But I mean, it is what it is. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. How were you able to deal with that loss? Because I mean, you are someone that you yeah. interacted with a lot of times. How did you handle that loss? How did you receive that, that loss? Yo, that loss is, I don't even know how to explain it. Because, yo, it's, it's, it's not even... You know, the, the thing with Ricky is that Ricky touched people's lives that didn't even know him. Yeah. Didn't even meet him. You know, it's heartbreaking, and especially with I don't even know how to explain it. It's just I knew him, yeah. and it was just you wish that he could have called someone, you know, like you wish that there was somebody that could have just stopped him, you yeah, know, like yeah. he was somebody that we weren't supposed to lose, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and we didn't know that he was going through what he was going through. Yeah. Yeah. 
and Ricky and I used to fight a lot. Eh? There's a lot of the times that we wouldn't even speak to each other. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time we fought, and I, I was obviously dating his cousin back then, and I was walking to the studio. No, he saw me at altitude, and I went to greet him, and he hit me with the car. He would make me feel like you ain't mm. shit. <laughs> you know, like he would be like, if he's upset at me, yeah. I'll know about it. Mm. I remember I, I didn't make cotton fist, and I didn't tell him, but I had told Bianca, but he thought like, dude, can you, you send me a message or something? How yeah, do you not yeah. tell me? So he was upset about that, and. I felt so little in that moment. I was so upset. I'm like, yeah. I, I went to greet you and you did this. And yeah. Me and my anxiety and yo, I'm just yeah. like, yo. So now when I'm walking to the house, he greets me. I ignore him. I'm yeah. like, fuck that shit. I'm not mm. greeting this yeah. guy. Yeah. I walk straight to the studio being a little bitch that I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He walks in, kicks everybody out of the studio, says, everybody, y'all need to get the fuck out. We're not you in the booth. And now I'm just sitting there like, oh shit. It's going <laughs> down. It's going down. Yo, but we had such a real conversation in that moment. And that's like one of the few times that we really had a real conversation with just me and him yeah. in the studio because a lot of the times it's in the stu we're fighting in the club people, or there's yeah. something going on like last time I was fighting with him at sumo and whatever well, that was like a real and I'm so happy we had that conversation because I was able to tell him like the things that I was insecure about with our relationship for years like there's a lot of the times like I would be too scared to talk to him or approach him because I still always saw him as this Ricky Rick person yeah, you know yeah, yeah. so I'm like the reason why I didn't call you and told B because I was scared I don't want to call you and say I can't make you get also I think you don't care you know yeah. but mm. I didn't realize you cared that much that you would be so upset with me so yeah I just it's just so unfortunate I don't even know how to explain it but there's so many stories now that I'm thinking about when I'm sitting with you guys mm about Ricky that just breaks my heart that I wish that and you know what makes me so upset yeah. what makes me so upset is that his tweet he said um, what was the tweet again where he's, what was the tweet for Ben do you guys know where he said I'm gonna I'll be I'll back, be back. Yeah. this land is Some, still my home mm. this land is still my home yeah. I'll try, I don't know what the word was yeah. but it's just like but you're not gonna be back in my lifetime yeah. Yeah. if you're talking about reincarnation yeah. okay yes maybe there's gonna be reincarnation but you're gonna come back and you can be a Chinese person in China yeah. we're never going to experience Ricky Rick yeah. as Ricky Rick yeah. and who he yeah. was so yeah. it's like okay if that consoled you in that moment fine but I hate that for that yeah, moment because yeah. you're not trying to console me at that moment because yeah. I'm never going to see you again. Yeah. And it's not consoling to be like, oh, you might get reincarnated. Might get reincarnated as a, a, a freaking swan. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I'll never get to see Ricky Damn, again. I'll yeah. never have to get that conversation again. It's over. It's yeah. done. Yeah. It's a wrap. Until I die, yes. it's over. And if I come back, I still will never see him again. Yeah. It's a lot to stomach. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. R.I.P. Ricky. R.I.P. Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Nadia. You're welcome. Yeah. This was extremely insightful. You dropped yeah. a lot This was a really good interview. Thank you so yeah. much, guys. Oh, thank you. I hope I didn't make you nervous. <laughs> yeah, you did a bit when you stepped in, but really? I guess that, you know, we really got into it. No, so. you guys handled yeah. it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank I you so much. Appreciate it. Cool. Shout out. Bye.